In Spain, in the little Galician port of Ogorove, researchers from the Bottlenose Dolphin Research Institute are studying these cetaceans. Bruno Diaz Lopez, its director, has equipped the port with sound captors to record the dolphins that arrived during lockdown. Now the dolphins are wandering about in groups around the port. During lockdown, we saw that sometimes the dolphins went to feed in unusual places. In the absence of man, some even risked going into mollusk farms. It's coming out there. Bruno asks himself if the dolphins have benefited from the end of port activity to modify their behavior. There's one. Ford's staying at about 60 meters. This individual is, I think it's Ford, yes. He's staying in this zone where we've seen him for a long time and frequently during lockdown. First indispensable step, identify the individuals. Each dolphin fin is specific. The scratches, the cuts due to the dangers which the animal has affronted during its life are like fingerprints. Once the dolphin is identified, researchers give it a name and especially record its vocalizations. During lockdown, because there was less sound disturbance, the dolphins communicated better. They didn't have to increase the amplitude of their sound emissions. In normal times, dolphins are forced to shout to be heard because of the intense noise of boats. The port of Ogrobe is very active at all hours of the day and night. During lockdown, the constant coming and going stopped. Hydrophones recorded many dolphin vocalizations. Their vocal repertory is rich with 14 distinct signals used for communication. Each signal is defined by a particular acoustic structure and a determined length. Some large dolphins hit the surface of the water with their tails to make large splashing sounds. But is this a kind of communication or perhaps an invitation to play? No one knows. These studies will allow us to better understand the behavior of large dolphins and their hunting zones in the absence of noise. They point to the measures to be taken to define safer transit corridors for large dolphins and to limit the ports and its surrounding areas noise pollution. Because of the halt in maritime activity, the general sound level fell by five decibels and even 12 decibels in some Mediterranean zones. At the same time, the water grew clearer. Ordinarily, large dolphins are rare in the Calanques of Marseille, which are crowded in winter and summer. But with lockdown, the dolphins are there in numbers, busy with rarely observed activity. The 
The hydrophones on board the Quiet Sea Operations drones have recorded curious signals. After two months of lockdown, we've got animals in the Kalonk who are playing with the echoes from the surface, the floor and the sides, like we might enjoy ourselves in a cathedral or cave to listen to the echoes. They're enjoying it and they're astonished. A signal arrives at the antenna directly. The direct signal is reflected to the surface, which is there. But that signal also went to the floor and returned from the floor. We know these are curious and playful animals, and this is just a demonstration of what a mammal does naturally to amuse itself. Supplementary proof that surrounding stress considerably diminished during lockdown. Scientists from Quiet Sea were surprised to see large dolphins with young seeking contact and playing with their boat. Unfortunately, since the return of crowds to the Kalonks, not so many dolphins come. In the Gulf of Mexico, the pandemic halted the petrol exploitation offshore, which usually causes an important and continuous flow of petrol and gas tankers. As a result, pollution of the seawater due to hydrocarbon leaks from boats dropped by half, and noise pollution was largely reduced. Common blue whales. Magnificent cetaceans about 20 meters long and weighing 40 to 50 tons, which usually cruise the open sea, came close to the coasts. Freed from the interference from the noise of boats, their communications became two to six times longer. Further north, the immense Canadian Gulf of Saint Laurent is the industrial outflow from the Great Lakes region. It's an intense hub of traffic where commercial shipping from around the world crosses paths. When the traffic was interrupted, people from Montreal were astonished to see a humpbacked whale come up the Saint Laurent River making impressive leaps which made it famous. Social networks shared these pictures millions of times. What's a humpbacked whale doing here? Montreal is 400 kilometers from the ocean. When it crosses the city, the Saint Laurent doesn't carry a drop of salt water and a cetacean will find nothing to eat. This will remain a mystery because the whale died shortly afterward from unknown causes. Further downstream in the Saint Laurent estuary, where salt and fresh water mix, a population of some hundreds of beluga whales has lived for a long time. These small cetaceans, four to five meters long, 
weighing up to a ton and a half, usually live in the cold waters of the Arctic. Nicknamed sea canaries, beluga are amongst the noisiest mammals on the planet. Like all great talkers, they don't like being interrupted, and the usual cacophony found in the estuary disturbs them a lot. Robert Michaud, research director of GREM, study group for marine mammals, knows these endearing creatures perfectly well. 60 to 80 belugas, they're fine animals. One there is a bit big. This population here, if it was healthy, should have doubled since we started studying them at the start of the 1980s. For several years, the scientific community has been worried about the rapid decline of the Saint Laurent beluga population. The mortality of females and young is rising, while Arctic populations have been spared. Is it possible that we're too noisy and that the noise interferes with communication between mothers and their young? Do the mothers spend more time looking for their young and the young their mothers? That could impose additional energy costs on them, which they can't afford. Researchers are working to identify the cause of this regression. Researcher Valeria Vergara is especially interested in communication between the mother and her single calf. She has identified a key element. That's a contact club. That's a contact club. A reply. There you go, another. In the case of the contact call, we now suspect that mother-calf contact or acoustic contact might be getting compromised by um, vessel noise and that in some circumstances this might make a reunion by mothers and calves that have become separated a lot more difficult and this can be dire for little calves. The large merchant ships that take the Saint Laurent produce noise that can reach 180 decibels. The many pleasure and excursion craft are also very noisy. In 2010 and 2012, the years when the newborn death rate was highest were those when there were the most pleasure craft. To understand the effects of noise on the relations between a mother and her calf, Robert Michaud and Valeria Vergara go to the fjord of Saguenay. This affluent of the Saint Laurent is a crash for the belugas. Valeria drops a hydrophone into the fjord waters, while Robert overflies it with a drone. The two researchers have come to evaluate the effect of boat noise on the contact call, the cry for help which maintains the relation between the mother and her young calf. Synchronization of the hydrophone and the aerial pictures show that the sound space is saturated by the noise of a ferry crossing the opening of the fjord of Saguenay. This is a necessary passage for the belugas coming in and out of the nursery. Valeria has an analogy. It's like deciding to go into a dark tunnel where you can't see or hear anything. This sensory hole identified by the researchers comes from the fact that the young beluga emit their calls on frequencies close to those of the deafening noise made by the ferries. As a result, communication between the mother and the child is interrupted.
When it has lost contact with its mother, the isolated and stressed young beluga is in great danger. Its need for socialization pushes it to go into ports where it hears a noise and to have contact with humans. But without its mother, it is condemned. In 2020 and 2021, during the pandemic, pleasure craft remained tied up. These years were exceptionally serene for the belugas of Saint Laurent. Robert Michaud and his team took advantage of this to make a number of sound recordings. Last April, our reflex was to put hydrophones in the water. Post-pandemic follow-up will be fascinating and interesting for us all. We all have intuitions, and I think we all have wishes that a peaceful summer could have improved relations between the mothers and their young. We just offered a publication which shows that during the passage of a boat, contact call distance is reduced by 50%. The beluga has become one of the best indicators of the state of health of the marine world. Once, miners took a canary with them down the mines. Its death warned them of the presence of methane, an explosive gas. The withering of the colonies of sea canaries warns us that the marine environment is not well. From the end of lockdown, Beachings began again to be notified from the Quebec Emergency Network of Marine Mammals. Rapid intervention is vital. Pulled off the rocks where it has washed up, the animal is cared for and comforted. It is put back in the water when it has regained its strength. We'll have to turn it to the front of the boat. Get ready. One, two, three, let go. Marine animals are subject to many sound disturbances. Ship sonar, especially military submersibles, examine the undersea space by echolocation like sperm whales. They interfere with the whale's system of communication, as well as of other cetaceans, and particularly belugas. Undersea drilling, seismic campaigns on the ocean floor in search of hydrocarbons, and also wind farms at sea disturb the lives of marine fauna. In water, sound propagates further and four times faster than in the air. Animal life is therefore particularly affected by the racket of human submarine activity. It mixes up their references and causes stress, which puts many species under pressure. Particularly violent noise can seriously affect the hearing of cetaceans, pushing them up to the surface without decompressing. This can cause an embolism and sometimes their beaching. By imposing a pause unknown in modern history on human activity, the COVID-19 epidemic has at least offered to scientists an unhoped for field of experimentation. While noise pollution of marine environments has been known and observed for a long time, the full extent was far from understood. 